Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Hapanwo TV. Now, in some of the recent videos I've made, especially one called um, My Dream Crop Circle, Come True, um, you may have heard me talking about a man called Lyle Watson. Now, um, I've actually I've probably referred to him in several other videos, and um, he's, he's not a very well-known individual nowadays, so I thought I'd better um, sort of explain a little bit more about who he is. That's him there. Um, this is a guy who has been a really big inspiration on me. Um, he he um, was born in 1939 in Johannesburg, South Africa. And um, he studied at uh, Johannesburg University and the Witwatersrand University. And he became a biologist and a zoologist and a scientist. You know, a bit like a, an evolutionary sort of like thing. Like, a bit like Richard Dawkins, I suppose, you know, into biology and things like that. And, um, but you can't imagine, apart from that, you can't imagine a character less like Richard Dawkins. I mean, um, he has become one of the most avant-garde and controversial scientists in history, or certainly in modern history. Um, there's very few people nowadays who probably compare with him, maybe Rupert Sheldrake. Uh, very, I don't think anyone else really compares with, else really compares with Lyle Watson. I mean, he wrote, he incorporated his science into studies of the paranormal, supernatural, um, anomalous phenomena, this kind of um, etheric workings of the universe, things like that. Um, and he uh, sort of wrote a lot in the 60s and 70s, um, and uh, he sort of became very much a New Age figure. Um, what, what it was, um, what inspired him actually was um, during his time in university and as he was growing up, he spent a lot of time studying the uh, indigenous history of South Africa in terms of the Zulu, the Bushmen and the various other um, indigenous tribes that lived in the country and their ancient wisdom and um, that really um, was very much a kind of um, it, it kind of like made them look see the world differently you know there are very few scientists actually willing to look into this area you know um, as David Icke says when he's interviewed with Cray Mutwa, you know this is overlooked by by the West you know the these, these people are regarded as savages you know primitive hunter-gatherers you know <laughs> um, in fact in this book Lightning Bird which is which is a book he wrote in 1981 uh, Watson actually meets Cray Mutwa and interviews him it's worth well worth um, reading this um, I'm gonna go through more of his books in a minute um, his most famous legacy probably is, in, is the inventing the term the hundredth monkey syndrome and um, the theory that goes along with that. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's very, very. Um, he, 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 he's invented many other things as well, which I'm going to go into in a minute. But you know, the hundredth monkey syndrome. You'll hear people like David Icke, uh, Rupert Sheldrake, and many modern researchers talking about both scientific and non-scientific. Um, his books, you know, were written most. His most popular books were written in the seventies, and they are, they, you know, many of them were bestsellers. I mean, this one, this one, Supernature, is, um, I think that was at the top of the Times bestseller lists in nineteen seventy three or whenever it came out. Um, it's seventy three. Yeah, this is um, this is really his sort of first big bestseller. Yeah, nineteen seventy three. Um, now these books are. I'll show you show you some of the others. Um, this is that's super. This is Life Tide, which he calls his sequel to Supernature, you know. And this is the this is the Romeo era, where he talks. He first talks about the cosmic nanny, which I've mentioned before, and I'll go into in more detail. Um, he, uh, you know, these books. I, I actually don't think I can't imagine these books like this being written nowadays. They certainly wouldn't be as popular. I mean, really, you know, this the they were written at the height of the counterculture, and of course, the counterculture in those days was very swiftly um, crushed and infiltrated, and poisoned by the authorities and the governments. Um, unfortunately, I mean, I think we're now moving into another counterculture today, and hopefully, you know, there will, you know, we're a bit more wiser now. We won't let ourselves be infiltrated, and. Um, you know, hopefully, we'll have the kind of revolution that they wanted at that time. Which, which the uh, young people, the, the hippies and the people like that wanted in those days and couldn't and couldn't have because it was subverted. Um, are these books, unfortunately, um, most of his books are now out of print, including these these four that I just showed you. Um, but you can get them on Amazon for 
quite reasonable prices. Lots and lots of second-hand copies going around. Um, you get them very cheaply, actually. Um, so have a look on Amazon and put in his name, Lyle Watson, and the various titles. Supernature is his most famous book, as I say. That's a good one to start with, actually, is this one. Um, now, um, in my crop circle video, I discuss something, you know, which I call the Cosmic Nanny. And I thought I maybe I better explain that in slightly more detail. In one of these books, and I can't find it, I can't find the reference now because it's not a very good index. But um, I think it's this one, Romeo Era. He describes something called the Cosmic Nanny. Now, what this is, is, is a mysterious force or some, or sort of a working of the universe where, you know, strange incidents will occur while you are investigating some kind of paranormal phenomenon. It's a bit difficult to explain, but these incidents actually scupper your, scupper all your plans. So if you're invest, say for instance, you're investigating a ghost story and you get a photograph of a big ghost, or you're out in the fields one day and you get a brilliant picture of an alien or UFO, the picture won't come out or the camera will break. And it may be the most reliable camera you've ever had, but it will break exactly the moment you need it. Um, another example is supposing you, and this, this actually happened, I think he describes it in the book, he actually managed to collect some ectoplasm from a seance and you put it in a test tube, you know, and um, you think, right, this is so precious, I'm going to send it to the laboratory, but I'm going to do it by special deliveries, you know, or by a security courier or something like that. You know, these people, you know, nothing ever gets lost that way, you know, hardly, very, very rarely does something get lost. Well, guess what? It'll get lost. And I think Watson, actually, this actually happened to Watson, you know, in, in he described it in one of his books. Um, so that the, now the sceptics will say, well, that's kind of a bit of a cop-out because it means that, you know, any, any, any sort of experiment into paranormal phenomena that goes wrong, um, you know, you couldn't say, well, it's the cosmic nanny. It's a kind of, it's a kind of universal cop-out. It's, a, it's what uh, Stephen Law calls, um, he calls, but it fits, the but it fits fallacy, I think he calls it. And, um, but the thing about it is, I mean, even if it is convenient, even if it does appear to be some kind of convenient cop-out for saying why these paranormal researchers can never do their experiments right, if it's true, it's true. You know, maybe it's it's not doesn't mean it's an invention of ours, especially because, like me, you know, a lot a lot of paranormal f researchers, you know, like Watson, like myself, you know, even though I'm, as, I'm don't do it as seriously as he does, I'm an amateur, but um, we know these things are real because we've we've actually had these things proved by our own experience. Now, you know, that's not that's not a that's not a contradiction because, like I say, say two people see the same thing or you see something which you're later, later able to confirm. That counts as a proved experience. Or you have a dream which comes true and you know it's come true and there are so many details in it, but you didn't record it and things like that. You know, that's and then you go out to, to do experiments, you can say, right, well if I can have this experience and I know it's real, I can then go and gather evidence by by doing experiments and, and um making recordings of the data before you say the prediction happens, which is what I talked about in my crop circle dream video. You know, my crop circle dream video. Now um you know, in, in, one, in one of these books, I mean, one of these books, I think it's this Lightning Bird book, where he, talk, where he meets Cradle Moutoir. I mean, he actually, he actually takes a very different approach to most other researchers. He actually reaches the point where he actually gives up trying to research the subject scientifically. He's so frustrated by the cosmic nanny. Um, and it's... Uh, And I can, I can sort of like, um, I can understand how he feels in a way, you know, because it, other people have said this. I mean, Jonathan Downs, the famous cryptozoologist, has talked about how, for instance, you know, he he get involved in these research and things would go wrong in his life. He calls it the psychic backlash. Um, what doesn't help actually is, you know, that there is, um, I mean, I'm not. This is not another cop out. This is another thing. You know, that if it's true, it's true. 
is that um, sometimes when data goes missing and experiments are, um, you know, go wrong unexpectedly, it's actually the work. It's actually not the cosmic nanny at play. It's actually the machinations of saboteurs. Um, I'm. I think there is a conspiracy to cover up certain aspects. In fact, um, the covering up of paranormal phenomena is the most probably the most. Um, what's the word? It's the biggest secret. It's not the reptilians, aliens. Free energy? No, it's, it's, it's covering up this kind of thing is the biggest secret. As, as, as David I called his book, The Biggest Secret. Well, that's it, I think. And yes, there is. I think there is. There seems to be. I can, I can sense the presence of the hidden hand here. Not the cosmic nanny only, but human human intervention. Oh, and anyway, you know, like I said, you know, what's, you can't please the sceptics. You know, you're never convinced. I mean, the, the the kind of thing that Stephen Law talks about. Um, actually, the skeptics are just as guilty of as anyone else, if not more so. You know, as I said, my crop my crop circle dream. Supposing I could prove my crop circle dream came true, you know what they're going to do? Golf clap for Ben, everyone. Come on, golf clap. Ben's proved us wrong. These things are real. Crop circles are not. Nah, crop circles of uh, aliens. No, <laughs> I don't think so. Do you? You know, I mean. I think our skeptics is um, they'll raise the bar. You know, they do exactly the same thing. What 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 we call raising the bar is basically the same thing that Stephen Law calls but it fit the but it fits fallacy. Um, for instance, like supposing the Rendlesham Forest incident had um, been uh, just seen just one one old man walking his dog in the woods one night and his triangular craft lands beside him and these little aliens get out and there's red lights flying through the trees. You know, um, you, you you know the Rendlesham Forest incident, the famous UFO event. Um, now, what will the sceptics say about that? Let's see. But there's no evidence, is there? There's no evidence at all. Um, it's an old, just one old man walking through the, through the forest and he sees a UFO and he expects us to believe him. He's just an attention seeker, obviously. I mean, the, the air base is nearby. You'd think that if there was a, you know, if, if there was UFOs in the woods, at least a dozen of the airmen would have seen it too. We have independent witnesses from the security police at the air base. Wouldn't you? Don't you think that they would have seen it too? And um, you know, I mean, I believe if if we had that, then I'd believe them. I believe it wasn't a lighthouse. I'll tell you what. You know, you'd if if the deputy base commander actually went out into the woods. And he took his tape recorder with him, and he had lots of other men around him, and they recorded what they saw. Then I believe you. But just one old man walking in the woods, I'm afraid that doesn't cut it, I'm afraid. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. This is just hearsay. Do you see what I mean? Because, I mean, everything that my, I've just talked about actually did happen, and still the sceptics say, no, it was a lighthouse. No, it was a truckload of burning manure. Personally, I think they're full of burning manure. And... Um, Various other things, a runaway joy, joy riding ice cream van, various other ridiculous theories. You know, I mean, <laughs> nothing any and nothing any believer ever comes out with can match what the skeptics are capable of. I'll tell you. Um. Anyway, where do we go from here? Well, there's one way place we can go, and there's one way in which, you know, we may be able to some, in some way contribute to Lyle Watson's legacy because guess what the other night on Sunday night on Sunday afternoon actually I had another crop circle dream yes I did I was actually dozing in Milton Keynes coast station I was on my way to see Bardo Bardo and I had a crop circle dream just like the one I had before where I lost the envelope I sent the envelope to myself to date it and I lost it remember in that crop circle that crop circle dream uh, video I did. Well, well, guess what? I've done it this time, and I've got the envelope here. The crop circle that I saw in my dream is on a piece of paper inside this envelope. This envelope is sealed. It's got a date on it, 30th of August 2011. Okay, and it is sealed. And there's the picture of the seal. So you, that seal has not been, cannot be tampered with without anyone finding out 
Now, if my crop circle dream comes true, and well, we may have to wait a while to find out, maybe till next year, I will open this on camera or in front of the witnesses, and you will see the image that I drew on Monday for the dream I had. All right, Lyle Watson's Cosmic Nanny. Let's see if you're gonna. Let's see if you are going to come. To, you're going to attack me now. Are you in force at the moment? Are you going to strike at me? Because according to Cosmic Nanny, right, this will go missing. I'm going to put it somewhere very, very safe. And as I say, nobody knows what's on this piece of paper except for me. Right. Um, I do recommend you get Lyle Watson's books. Um, like I said, they're very cheap. I mean, Lyle Watson died in 2008, uh, quite suddenly. And... Um, I was hoping there'd be some kind of memorial edition of his books, but it doesn't uh, look like there's going to be, which is a great shame. Um, so you have to make do with the cheap second-hand copies. But like I said, there's plenty of them out there. So go, go and get, go and snap them up and read them. Well, this is my little um, homage to this great man, Lyle Watson. Rest in peace, buddy. You're a good guy. An avant-garde scientist and spiritual man a danger to the authorities and an inspiration and hope giver for the rest of us. Thank you for watching Hapanmo TV. Hospital Ports Pride and Dignity stop the New World Order.